Hey there, it's your friend Phil here, project management trainer and coach. Welcome to Phil on the Mill. This is where I get my treadmill workout in. Before I move on to do my stretching exercises and a few other things, but I wanted to let you know that in order to get PMP certified, there are a number of things you need to check off or a number of things you need to be thinking of. I wanted to share one common misconception about the PMP exam. Some people think that all they need to do is go to a boot camp and things will magically work out for them. Now while boot camps, effective boot camps are very important, not every boot camp is going to work out for you as well as others could. You see, some boot camps are death by PowerPoint. And if you attend those boot camps, you're only going to have wasted about 30 hours of your time sitting down, listening to someone reading off slides. Waste of time. Some people may not read off the slides directly, but they're reading from scripts. That's very ineffective. It ends up being worthless, like garbage. So you want to be very careful before you go to any boot camp for the PMP exam, folks. You want to make sure that you do your research. And one of the things people do not do is ask for video, ask for extended video. Like, let me see a one hour video of you training me before I sign up for the so-called boot camp. You, you see what I'm saying? Some people get into boot camps only to realize it's a death by PowerPoint. The so-called instructor, even though they may know the content, they are limited in their abilities in passing across information. They are limited in their ability to convey what they think, what they've learned, what they feel, in a convincing and structured fashion, or I dare say in a real world fashion. You see, a lot of this content, this stuff that I train today for the PMP exam, I learned it in my real world project management. Talk about scheduling. I've done it. I've been a controller on a program doing nothing but schedules. Talk about earned value. I've done it. I've been responsible for earned value management in firms. Talk about quality. I've had to experience this firsthand on projects that I've been responsible for. Talk about procurements. I love to negotiate. It's one of the things I do and do well. I've had experience in negotiating with people across the world, not just in the USA. So these things I train, I've had first-hand experience with them working with resources, scoping out the project, WBS creation. Back in the day, the work breakdown structures that I worked on were inside a legacy system known as EMIS, and some of you know the firm, but we would construct a WBS in a blue screen, on a blue screen interface environment. Can you imagine that? Old days, old days. And I've evolved. I mean, I've used things like WBS Chart Pro freehand to actually create WBSs. So what I train is not just coming from, oh, I read the book. Or it's not just coming from, I got PMP certified yesterday. I have no experience in training people for this exam. No, no, no. I've been doing this for going to 13 years. So I'm saying all of that, folks to let you know that there are various calibers, types of trainers and training. You see, some training, you may feel not good for you. Someone else might like that style. Some people love death by PowerPoint. It would amaze you, some do. Some people don't like stories. Some people don't like learning the practicalities. There was a student that said, why are you making us develop a work breakdown structure? <laughs> I said to let the principles stick in the minds of those that have not been there before. So some people don't find value in things that others do. 
So it's good to do some research on your trainer, okay? Know what your trainer has to offer. I'm not talking about the company. So many people make this ridiculous mistake of looking at a company name. Oh, it's that company. Well, have you checked out the trainer? Uh, no. Because it's from that company, it's sure to be good. Well, you could be unpleasantly surprised about the level of trainer or the type of trainer. Maybe they've got all the degrees so the cows come home, but they're not able to deliver. Maybe they've got no degree and they're fantastic. So you gotta balance it out and make sure before you go into that boot camp, you know that that training style is gonna work for you. Now some people say fail, but I've got no choice. My learning folks at work in the training department, they are responsible for enlisting me in PMP exam training. Well, this is what you can do. If you haven't been on the channel long enough, I want to encourage you to check out my videos, okay? Look at the way I train. I try to make it as real world as possible while making it as relaxed as possible. Check out the videos. There are so many videos, over 700 videos on this channel that have helped so many people ace the exam. So what I advise you to do, get a feel for what I do, and then sign up for one of our programs. If you're new to the world of the PMP, go to praiseon.com, all right? And look for the curriculum, Understanding the Guide. It's all the way on the left-hand side of the screen. It's called Understanding the Guide, okay? The website, P-R-A-I-Z-I-O-N.com. That will get you grounded in the world of the PMBOK guide. You'll understand very rapidly, less than four hours, you'll understand what the PMI is really talking about. You know, the essence. So that before you go into your boot camp, you're already aligned to understand the knowledge areas and the direction for all the 49 processes. That is very important. You see, because for me, coming into the PMBOK guide, my question was always, what are they talking about? Why do we have to do this? What are they really getting at, you know? I found it very hard. But if I was on a course like Understanding the Guide, it would have helped me, you see? so. If your training department is setting up a boot camp, you're not really sure, you want to be grounded, don't just watch the videos on this channel, but go to praiseon.com and sign up for Understanding the Guide, okay? Now, another misconception that people have is, oh, well, if I go for Phil's boot camp, I'm going to be ready to take the exam soon after. Or if I go to any other boot camp, where they promise, take the exam the day after, I'll be fine. My friends, don't deceive yourself. There is a reason why I tell you students spend on average 100 to 300 hours preparing for the PMP exam. And then the outliers that may spend a lot less or a lot more. But don't tell yourself all I need to do is go for a boot camp and I'll take my PMP exam at the end of the boot camp. No. You've got to put in the time and effort. In the words of the Project Management Institute, PMP exam test takers are advised. You are advised to prepare, watch this word, vigorously for the PMP exam. You've got to prepare with vigor, with everything you've got. And I'm not just talking about the duration and passage of time, but I'm talking about the effort the level of concentration. You really need to be focused on your objective folks to get in certified, and you need to put in a considerable amount of effort, okay? The PMI said on average 35 hours, but honestly, I would 10x that to 300 hours to be in the safe zone. Some people may spend less, some people may spend more, but if you're putting in this 100 to 300, that would be my average. Okay, some people may exceed it. But don't think you can go for a boot camp 
and be ready immediately, except you have done some groundwork before coming into the boot camp. So what we did for one company out in Dalton, Georgia, one of Warren Buffett's companies, we asked them to get on the learning system a long while before the training. Some of you watching are from that company. <laughs> you know I'm talking about you. So they got on the LMS way in advance, studied, took the quizzes, read the study guide, the project management essentials that we give them. And at the end of the day, we got done with training on a Friday. We awarded certificates to those who passed the mock exam on that Friday. Joey, one of the attendees, sent in his application Friday afternoon. The PMI had approved it by Tuesday afternoon and he found space at the Prometric Test Center two days later on Thursday. He took his exam on Thursday, aced it. We had another student who did something similar and took the exam on Wednesday after getting done on a Friday. But these folks, they did a little bit of studying over the weekend. They let it marinate, let it sink in. That would be the extent you know, to which I would schedule my exam early. Otherwise, if you've not studied before boot camp, it's very unwise for you to just jump in and take the exam without assessing yourself, without taking quizzes, mock exams, modules, and so on. You see what I'm saying? So I want to challenge you, those of you who've been for my boot camp, some other boot camp, have you done what it takes after the course? Because the boot camp is not enough. It's not enough, folks. You've got to put in the time to let that information sink in and marinate. And you also need to give your brain cells the time to adjust. You know, I've seen this happen so many times where people aren't relaxed. They go into the exam, the outcome isn't very good. I talk about this student quite a lot who went into the exam on a Tuesday, failed the exam. I said, there's no reason why you should fail, except you didn't relax, because I know you know this stuff. Now, this isn't one of the students that passed our mock exam on the very first try. This student had, you know, about two or three tries before passing but a very smart and intelligent individual who was committed to learning, asking good questions, staying active in the class. So I thought there's no reason why you shouldn't kill this thing. Something went wrong. You need to relax. I was really amazed when this student said, Phil, I want to take the exam again on Saturday. What? <laughs> You've only got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to prepare. You want to take it on Saturday? said, yeah, I think I'm going to do what you advise. Take it easy, relax, let my brain have some time to recover. And that's what he did. And he went from getting below target and needs improvement in some areas, overall below target, went from there to five, five above targets, folk. Five. How do you go from below target overall with some needs improvement to, you know, a stellar performance of five ATs. Whoa. That shows you that the brain needs to relax. If your brain isn't rested, your brain isn't relaxed, the outcome is going to be less than ideal in many an instance. I hope it's not. But that's just the reality of how the brain works. Have you ever seen a question that you were able to answer like a while back? You encounter the question a few weeks or months later. You can't answer it. You're not mentally in the zone. That's why you can't answer it. So part of succeeding on the PMP exam, going for a boot camp that works for you, okay? Being prepared for the boot camp studying like you should to cover all the content. The next thing is to be in that peak Zen zone. If you're not in that peak Zen zone, if you're not in the zone, 
you're going to have to go home <laughs> and come back another day to play with the folks at Prometric. But I hope that doesn't happen. I really hope you're going to let yourself relax and then go for the attack. <laughs> you might want to put that on social media for someone. Hashtag relax and then attack. You got to take a chill pill. One of our students, Yolanda, she talked about this yesterday. She got certified on the 31st day of December. But she talks about relaxing after attacking to go back and attack again. You know, relax after you attack and then attack again. She talked about how she balanced studying and relaxing and doing fun stuff while studying, taking a chill pill while studying, and she had this 10-day curriculum like planned out. I want to challenge you. What is your curriculum for success? You know how she did it? The same page I'm telling you about on praiseyon.com, she signed up for the PMP exam prep camp course, the very first one that you'll find on the left-hand side of the screen. Um, what she did was she just went for it. She went for it and signed up. And every day for three days, she worked on the element. She signed up for a week subscription. And she was able to execute such that in 10 days, she aced the exam. See? So, folks, I advise you to do whatever it takes. To succeed your boot camp is not enough your study guide is not enough the death by PowerPoint instructor is not enough but you need to put in time to study the grime and by grime I'm talking about all of those pages that may to you appear like slime <laughs> in the PMBOK guide ITTOs is what they call them okay you got to study them all. And I say that in jest. You know I love the Pembok Guide and the stuff in there. But to some people, it's like veggies. You don't want to eat your veggies, but you need to eat your veggies. I don't want to be on this treadmill. Well, maybe now I do because I know the benefits. But before, I never wanted to be on the mill. I just wanted to do what I liked, you know, get on the mill when I like. But now, i got to show up because my health is more important than me feeling complacent. You know, sometimes you just want to be detached and removed. And that's not bad when you're on vacation, but you've got to grind out this stuff on the mail so you can actually take those vacations. You know, you've got to begin with the end in mind. The end is success. The end is, you know, that self-actualization, accomplishment. It's not even so much about the certification alone. It's about what you want to get from it. Okay, so I want you to think about all the great things you're going to get by being certified. Recognition, reward, rewards, did, did I hear you say an amen there? Because for rewards, a lot of people are guilty of not rewarding their PMP accomplishment. You should. You should get something for yourself to treat yourself. You accomplish something. So recognition in the workplace, reward, self-actualization, better opportunities. Some people only think of today. They only think of, oh, I've got this big old job and this ain't going nowhere. Let me tell you a story about a firm I trained out of Virginia. One of the attendees was a VP. And this VP, in her mind, thought, PMP, mundane. I don't need to do this. I'm king of the hill. I ain't gonna waste my time doing no PMP. But at the end of the day, a few months later, there was a layoff. She was affected. She went scrambling for PMP books to get certified, folks. Stuff changes in a blink. And when it does, it makes you think. Even before you got time to wink, you find yourself at the sink. <laughs> you find yourself at the sink where everything comes together and goes down the drain. You know, I don't want you to experience any pain, 
But I'm just trying to tell you, you need to plan ahead so that you can be ahead of the game. See, I'm not just rhyming. I'm really dropping some gold for someone. Someone who thinks mundane. Very, very rapidly, you can find yourself in a different world, a different geographic location, a different set of circumstances in life. And if you are in this thing for the long haul, let's just do it. Stop procrastinating. Stop giving yourself excuses. Many of you started the journey with me on this channel in 2018. Some of you, 2017. You know, but there's hope. There's hope. All right. Write down or hashtag to yourself, there is hope. A student who had been on this journey for three years got certified at the beginning of 2017. You know, and I brought that student to the channel to speak to you guys. This happens all the time. Maybe you are the next student who's gonna wake up and say, my goodness, what have I been doing? I need to get on that treadmill. I need to do what Yolanda did. Put in some time, eight hours a day is what she put in. Okay, so she looked for the opportunity of the Christmas break. And she actually told us that while her family were having fun and playing games during Christmas, she had to take herself out of the mix for a number of hours and just shut herself away and study. That's how you get certified on the 31st day of December. You think it's by doing nothing? No. No pain, no gain. It might look like pain when your family's having a blast and you're there behind the books, sweating and swatting. But I'm telling you folks, you put in the time, you put in the effort, you put in the energy, payback's gonna come in your favor, okay? Payback period's gonna be in your favor. You don't want your payback period to be years. Remember, you want it to be quick. So don't draw out your studying. Some people are getting payback period of two years, one year. No, no, no. You want to make it 90 days. Yolanda has shown us that it can be done. It can. You just got to be disciplined and put yourself on that regimen, folks. Make people around you aware, stakeholders, of what you want to do and ask them to hold you accountable. That's how you do it. Okay? Now, in closing, I really want you to check out the praiseon.com site because I believe there's stuff there that's going to help you. All right? Take a look at the channel and the history of Praiseon. We put out free stuff all the time. But we've got a business to run so that we can keep adding value to people. Everything can't be free. But there's a ton of stuff on YouTube, folks, that is free. But the free stuff is a supplement. You need to get some main stuff, okay? I recommend the PMP exam prep camp course. When you go to Praiseon, it's the very first one that you see, the very first course that you see. That's what I'm recommending to you, all right? So go on there, sign up for the course, watch the videos. It's not about taking mock exams. That's another misconception people have. Oh, well, if I just take, up enough, take enough mock exams, I'll succeed. No, it's not about the mock exams. You've got to get the knowledge, and then you've got to be able to apply the knowledge. How do you get to know how to apply the knowledge? By understanding the rationale and the interactions. That's how you do it, folks. On this channel, I talk about interactions all the time because they are important if you really are looking to succeed on the PMP exam. Understanding what happens first, what happens next. I'm not talking about regurgitating page 25. Page 25 is all well and good, but it's not gonna show you the interactions of processes like an image could. And some of these images, I put them out on this channel, they're different from page 25, all right? There's so much to say, folks, but I'm going to call it a day for now. I'm going to get back to my workout and do my stretches and everything else I've got left. And I'll speak to you again another time on your friend Phil on the mill. Take care. And while you are on the treadmill, be sure to put in some headphones, earphones, and listen to the Project Management Audio Digest. 
also available on praiseon.com. All right, enough said. Thanks for joining me. Take care. See you again soon. Bye for now. Later.